Dallas Park. We are going to have now uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew Johnson and Niles uh, Syker in a talk about packaging with Java Helper. Uh, you most probably know Matthew because he gave the last, the previous talk before lunch and presented. My fault. <laughs> so he has a, is a long-term uh, contributor to the Debian Java team and has uh, contributed all these uh, great talks, uh, great uh, tools we use. And Niles uh, is uh, also working on that and also known for his work on the Eclipse packaging. Uh, so without further ado. Um, so when I started packaging, Java software, I noticed there was quite a lot of uh, work required uh, and not very many tools to support it. So I wrote Java Helper. Um, Java Helper gives you um, uh, tools to help you with the packaging workflow all the way from processing upstream releases, um, which with a lot of Java software is more tricky than one would like, uh, right through to installing and building the resulting deb. Um, so, I'm going to go over a bunch of the tasks that um, have specialist Java requirements and how the tools uh, in Java Helper can help you do that. And then also a quick summary of how to use Java Helper from CDBS and DH7. So firstly, upstream. The problem with um, a lot of Java upstreams is they give you their source as jar files or as zip files, which obviously we can't put in the archive. Um, a lot of the time they will have bundled uh, the jars that they're from the third party libraries they depend on. Uh, they may even include all of the built class files and the Java doc that, that they want to ship as well in the sources all in a single bundle. And if you have to repack this, then you're gonna have to do it every single time there's a new upstream release. So in order to help with that, we have uh, JH Repack. So JH Repack is something you can give to uScan, so you can put it at the end of your watch file list. And if you do that, uScan will invoke it for you every time it gets a new upstream release. Uh, or you can obviously call it by hand with the same syntax. So what JH Repack will do is, the first thing it will do is it will take whatever archive format upstream has and turn it into a targz. It will also go through and remove any of the jars and class files that are embedded in it. And if there's a Java doc tree, it will remove that whole tree and try and clean up all of the directories. So with any luck, this is sufficient for you to get a uh, DFSG free tarball, which you can actually use as a source file for your, um, for your package. Um, now, once you've got your upstream tarball, um, there may be some things wrong with the build system. So the first problem is if you've stripped out all of the third-party libraries, the build system is still going to expect you to have them in the tree uh, and not in user share Java or wherever else that you're pulling the package dependencies from. Uh, the build system might not actually work. This is um, sadly a lot more common than you would like. Or it might not even be, exist. Uh, there's a lot of Java upstreams where they ship you some Java, Java files and they say, compile them. And they don't give you anything more of a build system than that. Um, and then uh, the build system also might not produce the Java doc, which as I mentioned in the uh, previous talk, we would like all libraries to provide Java docs for the people using it. So there are a couple of tools here which help with these problems. Um, the first is JH link jars. Uh, this basically looks through your list of build dependencies, uh, finds all of the jars that are contained within them and sim links them into the directory where upstream's build system is expecting to find them. Uh, this may give you some extra jars that you aren't necessarily required linked in there, but hopefully the upstream build system will ignore any of the ones it's not using. Um, and you can do this in the normal deb helper style by putting a fi file in um, Debian directory, just mentioning where you'd like them linked into. Uh, and if you do that, one of the things that uh, Java Helper has is a clean... Um, command which will automatically remove all of the ones there if, they're men if it's mentioned in Debian link jars. If you don't have a working build system at all, and it may be the case that um, it fails the sane build system test rather than just doesn't work, perhaps actually what you want to do is just throw it out completely. Um, so JH build is designed to, as a simple point and click, 
I've got a bunch of Java files here. Please compile them all and put them in a jar. But for a large number of packages, this is actually all you need for, for, from a build system. So there's a, a selection of ways to call this. Um, again, there's Debian slash Java build, and if you have this file, you just list uh, the jar file you want to be produced and where all of your source files are. And it will find all of the Java files and um, compile them for you. One of the things you will need to do is to set the uh, Java home in the class path because we require all um, Java packages to build with a known good VM all of the time. So you have to declare which one that is. And it can't figure out your class path. Having done that, though, it does do a number of useful things for you. It will um, put the class path in the manifest of the jar. Um, and it will also build your Java doc for you. Um, all of the jars which you require to build. Um, if, uh, do feel free to chip in with questions at any time. I believe there is a mic around. Um, so that's build systems. If you find that you actually have a reasonably complicated package, this may not be uh, suitable for you. It is designed for the, the, the common simple case. Uh, and in that case, you may end up writing um, an Ant or a Maven build file, which you keep in the Debian directory in order to, um, in order to build the package. Uh, but hopefully not too many of them. Now, if you do have an upstream um, build system that works at least to some extent, it may miss a few things which actually in Debian we would like. I was talking in the previous uh, talk about whether we should require um, library packages to declare their class path in the manifest entries. Uh, and that is generally a good idea because it means that uh, the your R depends don't have to know about your dependencies. Uh, uh, however, most Java upstreams are of the opinion that if they release some code, it's in a jar, they've told, told you what jars you need, uh, and perhaps maybe in upstream's world they embed the jars into uh, all, all of their third-party libraries, uh, they don't need to have a manifest entry. So a lot of um, Java upstreams are missing them. So in order to make this e easier, there are um, a couple of tools for doing that. The Debian-specific manifest entries I will refer to later. Um, so the simplest one is JH class path, where you basically just have a Debian class path file, where you list the path to a jar and a list of jars that it depends on, and it will update the class path entry for you. A, in, a, any, in some more complicated case, maybe you need to set the main class because this is going to be executed with java-jar. Um, you can use Debian manifest, where you basically put embed a manifest entry for each jar that you want. Um, again, these are um, you can just invoke these without any arguments, and then if there is a Debian manifest or class path file, uh, it will pick those up. So it's perfect for using in the normal Deb helper style. So once you've got past building upstream, um, Java policy gives you a number of um, requirements for how you install your uh, install things into your package. Uh, in order to uh, avoid code duplication to support all of these, there are a couple of um, useful Java helper tools as well. So, it, and in addition, we may want to change some of these requirements future in policy, and if there's a tool that does it for you, then we only have to rebuild packages, we don't have to make source changes. So, the first one of these is JH install libs. The policy currently requires that if you have a Java library, then the at least the top level jar you expect people to um, link against, you need to put in user share Java. And it has to be of a particular format, so package name hyphen version dot jar with a symlink from package name dot jar. If you just simply list some jar files in, J in Debian slash JLibs, then they will all get put into the correct location and the version number appended and the symlink set up. Not only that, it will attempt to strip out from the um, jar file name things like upstream versions and so on. So it will do quite a good job of guessing that upstream's built this jar file name, but we should in install it like this. Oh, 
Um, if uh, it will use the package version um, and strip off the FSG suffixes and things. If you find that you've got a case which is more complicated than the automatic detection works, you can give it a regex for uh, help it along if it doesn't can't work things out by itself. The second one here is JH install Javadoc, and this has three forms. The <coughs> simplest one, you tell it where your Javadoc has been built and it will install it to use shared doc your package name slash API, uh, and it will also generate a doc base entry um, and install that as well. So you get it registered with doc base automatically. If you want, and actually this is um, one of the more common cases, that you want the API to exist under the um, part user share doc and the um, because the docs in a separate package, so lib through Java rather than lib through Java doc, then you can give it the path you actually want to install it to. And finally, if you've used JH build in order to generate um, your Java doc, if you say internal, it will go off and find the Java doc that it built for you earlier, uh, and install that in 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 the normal fashion. Um, so. Now, that will get you as far as giving you a binary package, but your binary package at runtime may need uh, some may need some help. So, um, every Java program needs a wrapper script. Uh, the kernel can't execute Java code natively. And in some cases, you may want to load uh, libjvm.so in your own application, not so much in a Java application, but in, in, in something which can embed Java inside itself. Now, the problem with this is that this is shipped in a uh, in a architecture specific directory, which doesn't use the same architecture names as Debian. So there are a few tools here which are provided to help you with that. Um, oh, I don't have a separate slide for that. So Jar Wrapper uh, is a bin format misc helper for uh, Jar files. If you set your Jar file to be executable and depend on Jar Wrapper, then you can invoke it exactly like you would any other program, and the kernel will go and run uh, jar wrapper um, with your jar as an argument. And jar wrapper calls java-jar, and in order for that to work, you have to have a, all of your class path entries in a manifest, and you need to have uh, a main class attribute to tell it which class is your entry point to your program. And as I, I showed earlier, the, um, you can specify some arguments to JH build and it will set those up for you, or you can use JH manifest and it will fix the manifest entry of your jar file for you. If you're in the unfortunate situation, which a lot of people are, that you need to pass extra arguments to the JVM or you need to use a specific JVM, there are also a Debian specific manifest entries for those, which it will unpack and then use that in order to invoke uh, the JVM on your jar file. Um, go and have a look at the documentation if you want to know what those are. Uh, it's documented in the Java, Java helper docs, yeah. Um, now, um, one of the other tools is, I have is jhexec. Now this makes it quite easy to set up an executable jar file. It will, at package build time, scan all of the um, places it expects a binary to be. If one of those is either a jar or a symlink to a jar, it will set that executable for you and then um, automatically in your um, build tree. And then, as we'll see later, this will, will automatically generate a dependency on jar wrapper for you. So if you install your jar as normal and use dhlink to put a symlink into user bin, everything else will happen for you. JavaVars.show is something which is shipped. There's two versions of it. One shipped in um, Java Helper, and one of them shipped with jar wrapper. If at runtime you need to know um, get, for example, the path to libjvm.so. You give it a Java home, and it will look at your Debian architecture and work out the path, the path you need for that. Uh, there's also a version which is a makefile snippet so that you can include this at build time if you need it at build time, which is shipped with Java Helper as well. So now, dependence lines. After having uh, put all of your libraries in build depends and put all of them in your class path and put all of them in your manifest entry, um, putting listing them in your depends line is also um, 
a little tedious. Fortunately, we can do something about that. So um, there's also a few other things you need in your depends lines, like some alternate depends on different JREs and virtual packages. And if you've got an executable jar, you also need jar, jar, um, jar wrapper in your dependencies. So we have JH depends. The advantage of JH depends is this is a single place where all of this happens for you. So you don't have to write the code, and if we change any of this in policy, it'll all happen automatically. Um, so JH depends will do a number of things for you. The first thing it does is it looks at all of your jar files. If those jar files have a class path entry, it takes the jars listed in there and works out which packages contain them. And then it puts those into your depends. In fact, it populates uh, a variable called Java code on depends, which you can then put in your control file. Uh, the second thing it will do is if you have an executable jar or you've called it to tell it that you need to depend on a runtime, it will uh, automatically figure out which virtual package you need to depend on based on your class file versions. And it will also, uh, you can also specify which VM you want to be as, as a default. Um, so yes. So the next thing I'm going to hand over to Niles, who's ri written the um, support for Eclipse and Eclipse um, features in Java Helper. Yeah. As said, I have built some uh, tools for, uh, to, uh, for building Eclipse packages, not Eclipse itself, but uh, packages like hopefully Eclipse CDT and EMF and RSS, Eclipse RSS, which are already in the archive. They use these helpers. Um, they're based on the PDE-based build from upstream, which basically looks at the manifest files of the plugin it's building and a number of other files and auto generates an end build base, uh, end base build on that. Um, which is also very great, but the problem is that the clean target doesn't clean up these auto generate build files, which causes a problem in terms of our requirements for cleaning. Uh, the solution to that is today is to simply copy the whole thing into a new layer, build it there, and then remove that directory when we're done building. This is also the thing we do for um, Eclipse itself when we build. And for that, we have JH set up environment where you simply um, tell it which files it should copy into a build there, which it will create for you. Uh, there is a dip helper file for that, which is not listed here, but you can make a dip, dip helper like file for that. Um, secondly, Eclipse is based on a lot of non-Eclipse plugins, and they have a special syntax for being, or well, a second special requirement to be included in the build. Namely, Eclipse plugins are automatically figured out from their um, features they're included, but when you need to build um, against a link against something like um, some of the Apache um, files, which are actually pretty common in Eclipse, they have to be specified as orbit dependencies, which is actually a very fancy name for just external dependencies. That being said, um, there are some special requirements for that. Um, first of all, it needs to have the USGI metadata, which most of them, most upstreams don't ship with by default. We are in the lock that uh, Eclipse, most Eclipse uh, core plugins, they take the uh, upstream plugins themselves and compile them with this so we can just download the official OSG bundles, OSGI bundles and read the manifest from there and just copy it to our build and include it. Uh, in some cases, however, they embed the actual OP dependency directly into the uh, Eclipse bundle and just had this um, require class bundle class path that tells uh, Eclipse to load the jar file from within another jar file. And that obviously doesn't work too well. Um, again, we have to manually solve this by um, adding the USG metadata to the, uh, the external dependency and then replace the bundle class path with a require bundle instead. But other than that, it's mostly done. So, but other than that, it um, by default fetches from Orbit. Uh, what we do instead here in Debian is we set up a Orbit directory during build time where we just put symlinks to their actual dependencies. And we have a helper tutor for that because it's rather tedious and the names doesn't fit. So uh, JH gener uh, generate orbit DM will be list uh, given a list of jar files. It will read all it needs to know from these jar files if they have the OSG IMN metadata, and will just create the actual symlinks and names. It will even go further and generate a um, 
part of a, um, a dependency list for um, in the um, substitution bar called the orbit call and depends you can use for your package. It will always be set if you use this uh, tool, even if there are no orbit dependencies. So you can always just add it. Next thing is actually building these um, plugins and. Currently, we only have support for building a feature, which is basically a set of plugins, or sometimes a set of features. Um, in this case, um, upstreams are usually very good at separating each plugin to a folder with a manifest, its source files, and also it's very neatly separated. Um, and the manifests have all the information we need, thanks to the OSGI met metadata. And in fact, just starting to build, the upstream build system, which is a uh, modified version of AND, um, on top of that, will actually figure everything out just itself. So, the problem is, as listed, it takes over 10 arguments to invoke this, um, to avoid it writing to your home directory, which we can't do during a build deed, even uh, sort of other things. Um, we have been working with Linux tools, specifically the Eclipse Build Start Project, which has provided us two wrapper scripts for this one uh, used directly and one that's used behind the scenes. And they do a very good job of starting handling all of this, but still, it does not work very much like a Debian built, um, a Debian Deb helper tool. And for that, I have created JH compiled features, which is a wrap around that. Simply list, uh, given a list of uh, IDs to build, and this can also be specified uh, in a Deb helper file, which is unfortunately not mentioned. It will generate um, all the features for you and uh, just leave them for Eclipse in install, JH uh, install Eclipse, which will then pick them up and install them. The only thing you need to do is list which packages each feature goes into. Uh, we also have another problem with the built features is that they contain the open dependencies, a full copy of it. So when you use this, it will un unpack time and when it installs into the package, find these all bit dependencies and we replace them with a symlink. Um, but other than that, it's just a fancy wrapper file and zip. It would add no sweat to find the given, um, given zip files. And that was basically it on Eclipse Hello. So having gone over all of the individual programs, um, fortunately we're now in an enlightened age where you don't have to like, list all of these manually in your Debian rules file. We have instead a number of frameworks for doing packaging. Um, so let's have a look first. DH7. That's a DH7 file, which will, uh, Debian rules file, which will do everything um, you need to do for building Debian pack uh, Java packages, hopefully. So double dash with Java helper, obviously you depend on Java helper, and you need to give it perhaps a class path and, um, a, um, and the path to your Java home. Uh, now, if you're using Ant, then um, Dev, uh, Dev Helper's um, auto build support should hopefully pick up um, your Ant build script and invoke that correctly. And if you're using JH build, then that will all be picked up just by doing this. Um, CDBS uh, is reasonably similar. Instead, we have um, uh, environment variables to do the JH build invocation, and then you include, have to include Java Helper.mk as well as uh, the CDBS stuff, um, but otherwise it's the same. Um, obviously, you know this is only the ideal world, so you may end up having to override some things, um, uh, but that just works exactly like you'd expect with um, Dev Helper. You can do override some JH tool, um, and that'll work perfectly normally. Um, so. In order to make this even easier for people, um, I wrote a tool called JH Make Package, and you can rock up in some um, build tree from upstream, call that, and it will try and uh, build for you a Debian directory, which will need a little bit of modification with uh, copyright files and um, uh, so on, but will basically uh, hopefully get a lot of this sort of stuff right for you. Um, Um, one that will um, doesn't need a lot of extra tweaking. If you, if you don't have a working build system and you need to uh, patch it or give it unusual arguments or if um, or whatever, then you're going to need to tweak this for a bit. Um, so 
Um, there's so Java Helper contains documentation in the package, which is installed in the obvious place. Um, we have a website uh, and a mailing list if you want to ask any questions about this. And this will shortly be linked from the website, as I mentioned previously, uh, a series of examples which I'm uh, writing, which gives you all of the packaging you need to um, build and install a simple package of various types of various different build systems. So one of the things I haven't mentioned in this talk is Maven. Uh, Maven is a build system which is gaining a lot of popularity with upstreams. Uh, it works from the model that the Maven repositories will contain all the sources in the world ever, and when you run your Maven script, it will go and download them all for you and uh, attempt to build everything, uh, which obviously is not great when you're trying to build on a buildy without network access. Um, as such, we have solutions to this which are separate to Java Helper. There's a Maven packaging. There are a number of Maven packaging tools, which is why I haven't mentioned them here. But um, um, you'll have to go and look those up separately. But if you do have um, a uh, package that uses Maven, we do have some support for that. Um, so does anybody have any questions about this or anything else related to packaging Java? Do you know how many packages are using Java Helper for now? Mm, I think at least 70, maybe 80, as I recall. What's the question in the back? They have not seen your examples yet. Can you uh, point me to some packages which you think have uh, good practices? Uh, well, you should have a look at the examples I've written. Um, if I go to... Um, Uh, not there, apparently. <laughs> um, I will uh, have a sort that out in a minute, ask some of the questions. Um, all of my packages are um, done using Java Helper and with Dev Helper 7. Um, a lot of the ones where I'm also upstream use make files as the build system, uh, which is atypical for Java, but I like make. Um, indeed. There's also lib free Marga Java for an excellent example of how to link Java docs. Um, it's one of the first ones that were converted to do that yeah. part. Yes, one of the things I forgot to mention because it was written after we um, wrote the slides um, is that when you're generating a Java doc, if um, uh, JH build will automatically work out if you have a Java doc package in your dependencies, it will use link so that the generated doc, Java doc links to the new one. And if you do have Java doc which link has links like that, then we will automatically give you a dependency list um, or a recommend uh, list containing those, Java, those other Java doc packages. So again, this is all done for you. Yeah, that will first be in 2.32. Yeah, 0 32. which hopefully we'll upload this week. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, man pages. Um, so as with any um, uh, program that's in Debian, um, if, you, you sh if you ship a program, you should ship a man page for it. Um, there's no specific support in here for generating man pages. There are other things which will do that if your upstream doesn't contain a man page, which with Java software is uh, almost certain. Uh, but yes, you should provide a man page for it. No, I, we don't have anything there, but um, there are tools like Dotbook to Man and the various other things where, um, or Help to Man if you're, if you're in the lucky position that it has a, a usable help output, which is also unlikely. Um, but yeah, that's documented elsewhere. Um, Dotbook to Man, Help to Man, you can see the pattern. <laughs> 
Yes, I'm uh, looking at uh, packaging Etherpad, which is quite a big uh, mess, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, it's very That's common. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how much can Java Helper help out with? And also, a lot of the jar files, they bundle jar yeah. files and build with some shell well, script. Yeah. And uh, the jar files, some of them are in already existing Debian packages, like openoffice.org dash common. Mm. How? Um, Ideally, you're going to have to package all of the, the dependencies independently, and it may be the case that to package your program, you need to then, first of all, package five or so libraries. Which I've there, started really. doing. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if your libraries are of, the, are, are, are of the form, here are some Java files, stick them in, a, compile them and stick them in a jar, um, Java Helper makes that almost entirely trivial. Uh, everything gets done for you. Um, if you're the, in the situation where actually you do have quite a complicated uh, piece of software, it needs to do various things at runtime, which mean that you can't just run a jar file and so on, then that becomes a lot more difficult, and there's not a lot we can do to try and help you. However, where, where we can, if you have any suggestions for extra helper tools, I'm more than help, happy to include them. Um, but a, a lot of the things in there are still going to be useful and still going to be able to help you package them more quickly. Um, so, I mean, it depends precisely what is going on with your piece of software. <coughs> it may be the case that you can have um, a rules file that looks like that and a few files in, De in Debian, and if so, that's great. Um, if it's reasonably large and complicated, then you'll probably have to do at least some stuff by hand, but hopefully we can get rid of some of the, stuff, um, some of the problems for you. Yeah, the Debian Java team is very helpful so far, I've seen, so thanks. So uh, on IRC, you had mentioned a, mentioned a preference for DH7 over uh, CDBS. Any, can you elaborate on that a little bit? <laughs> what BDAO said. <laughs> um, um, I don't really understand uh, CDBS very much. Um, I wrote this by um, cribbing from some other things. DH7 just seems a lot more obvious as to what's, how it works to me. Um, the, all of the override stuff um, is very nice and, you know, you, you read it and it's pretty obvious what's going on if you understand DH7. Um, all DH7 does is just run all the DH commands in, in order. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's basically, it's a long form old DH, uh, dev helper, um, but without having all of the tedious typing. Um, plus, I suppose um, Java Helper might integrate slightly better because I understand what's going on. Yeah, I was just going to say. I mean, sometimes in, in addition to a nice, simple uh, DH7 file, I mean, the other thing that seems to have to happen packaging up Java stuff is you need to patch up a an upstream mm -hmm. ant file if it's done with yeah. ant because they'll hard code jar versions and things yeah. like that. And I'm just wondering. This is just an idea I'm throwing out there. Uh, you know, maybe that could be automated where we actually. We, we look at the name of the jar and maybe we heuristically figure out, well, we, we have this jar in Debian or we don't. I mean, it'd be, sometimes it's even knowing where to start. Yeah. Because you've got to find all those jars mm -hmm. to figure out whether or not they're actually in there. It's a version you need. So I'm actually working on free TTS at the moment, which is the, you know, flight re-implementation in Java. And um, contrary to popular belief, if you leave the Java sound API stuff off, the rest of it's completely free software and works just great. Um, but I, I spent a lot of time angsting over whether to care about the existing ant build.xml or not. Because in fact, the about 90% of its content is um, poorly a poorly written attempt to do all the things that you don't actually want to do for a Debian package. Um, by, by which I mean it, it emits an incredibly heavy, you know, jar file that has all the, the docs and lots of demo executables and other junk in it. Um, and a lot of the logic that's in there is all about building all these subservient pieces and, and making them part of the distributable thing. And after spending quite a bit of time trying to unwrap that and understand, you know, get over my fierce aversion to XML for you know, build logic and, and dig through it, what I realized is, oh, you know, what I actually want to have happen here is really, really simple, and this is just the wrong approach. So I'm actually right now sort of sitting here doing it the other way, which is, you know, forget the existing build file, treat it as if it just didn't come with one and, and craft from scratch. And I think I'm going to end up with something I'm much, much happier with. 
This course is obviously very dependent on the individual case of you know what the upstream gave you, but um, so the URL is actually packagejava.alef.org slash examples. Um, and here's a this is what we have at the moment. So if we have a look at the simplest case here, um, then it'll give you everything you need in your um, Debian uh, which is that much. Um, and the trivial Debian rules file. So that's the sort of thing I've got for the examples. And it does at the moment only cover simple cases with ant and with using um, uh, with using JH build as the build system. But um, that should give you enough of a clue to work from there. And I'm hoping to add more examples as I think them up. Um, are there any other questions? Cool. Well, I'm happy for anybody to call on me afterwards and uh, ask me questions and or to come and talk on an IRC or the mailing list. Sorry, I had a last question. Sure. So uh, uh, all these uh, tools, uh, you, you feel comfortable maintaining them yourself? You want more people to help you? I, I understand they're written in Perl. Um, I'm always happy to have help. Um, Niles and is, is, is now helping working on them. Um, the majority of, uh, they're about now about half and half. I originally started writing things as shell scripts. Uh, we're slowly moving stuff over to Perl where, um, where it's too complicated for that or where yeah. Niles has written them because he speaks Perl and I don't. Um, I'm perfectly happy for people to submit patches or entirely new tools or rewrite things in Perl for me. That's totally fine. One of the tricks of rewriting the things in Perl is we can use the official dev helper backend, which deals with a lot of problems for us, like argument passing. A lot of them just gets fixed by dev helper, the backend. So that's one yeah. of the reasons. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for people to rewrite stuff in Perl for me, but um, I don't know enough Perl to do it myself yet. <laughs> cool.